Idaho's lieutenant governor calls on us to pick up the sword and fight Christ and fight. Christ will reign in the state of Idaho is what she says in an interview. This is by dead state by Sky Palma from May 9th of 2022. This is another governor, uh, another person in government that's trying to be the next Lauren Boebert, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and just saying like the most inflammatory uh, comments in order to get like a sound bite that appeals to her base. And this is luckily it sounds like it didn't really work so well for her in the, the upcoming in the election. But the problem is we have these people that are saying these horrible inflammatory statements that anybody could say, oh, she's speaking in metaphor or something like that. And you can't say that this is a call for physical action, but it's just vague enough for the wrong person hearing somebody say, pick up the sword for Christ. They, we've just had a, uh, we've just had a mass shooting. And uh, as mentioned in the previous article or in the previous segment, this, these kinds of vague threats of violence are exactly what we don't need right now in this country. We need, we need people in leadership positions, uh, advocating for no violence they got they can advocate for any weird policy that they want for their side but as soon as they start putting up violent imagery into their speeches uh it, it's a it's taken a wrong turn that happened bad with uh january 6 where, where trump was able to just weasel out of what his thing as being not he wasn't advocating from the to storm the storm the capital he it was a metaphor or some kind of excuse like that they keep using this wishy-washy language in order to uh, absolve themselves of saying these kinds of comments that are definitely going to provoke people on their base to do something horrible mm. Yeah, um, Janish, Janice Mc, McGretchen? McGeechen. 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 I forgot to say her name. Well, I think we all Thank said you. it differently, but she's not somebody that we respect too much. So we'll try our best not to be I, rude. I, but yeah, I, I, yeah I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to mispronounce her name. Um, she is has been, uh, over the past top, couple of years, been no stranger to... Um, uh, putting yourself out there, um, like t getting pictures taken with um, the local militia. Um, there's pictures of her uh, for her run of the governorship. Um, she lieutenant governor currently of Idaho and um, is running for or was running for the, the governorship of Idaho. She lost in the primary. I quite handedly, you said, Kelly. Yeah, by tw over twenty percent. Oh, okay, that's well, that's good. I mean, she's done things like she's uh, pre-taped speeches at conferences holded by the white national Nick Fuentes. Um, she w showed a video of her with a, holding a gun and a Bible while she's in her SUV. Things like this are her uh, stock in trade. But anyway, Rex, what do you think of our politicians? <laughs> I'm um, always gonna hit the cat. It's 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 low hanging fruit. Man. No, no, it's okay. Um, it, it's it's a stark difference. Um, you know, we don't we we don't have a lot of secular politicians, even in our parliament here in Canada. Um, but we're just not as loud uh, about our support for our faith. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, you know, when, when we talk about that that noise, that, that volume, um, saying what she said, you know, quoting Christ will reign in the state of Idaho. Uh, it's, it's very clear. Um, and it's scary, uh, because, you know, these people are, they're ignorant and they lack empathy or at least that's my perspective of it because they're unable, they're unwilling or unaware that other people don't view the world the same way that they do uh, and may not wish to be governed under that same theology, uh, right? I, I think that us as secular individuals, uh, we appreciate um, if, if the law were secular because it governs people as, as people, as individuals um, and treats them all the same. And I think that that's what we should be striving for. So this idea that, that one, uh, one theology is going to reign supreme is scary. And I suppose they're, they're also a little bit ignorant in that they don't look at other countries that may be theocratic, but just not the same religion as them, right? And I think that they're scared to live in some of these other countries um, 
that that are are ruled um, by some religion, and somehow they can't see how that would affect people in in their own country if they decided to govern using their their theology. So. Uh, I'd be really surprised if they're completely ignorant. I think it's more of they see their religion as the right religion. So you can see like an Islamic country in another in another part of the world. And they'll go like, those are the barbarians. That's that's me saying their side, not saying my side. But uh, they'll say those are the barbarians. But if we were a Christian nation, everything would be so much better. So it's it's not so much like they're they're unaware that there are people that oppose their views. They want to force their it seems like they want to force their views on the rest of the country. That that's why they're they're they had to sneak so many uh, Supreme Court justices into into the court under from the right wing. It wasn't because of, they thought that was what the whole country wanted. It's because that's what they want for the country. That I don't think they're ignorant at all. This is all of like very strategic of them wanting their country to be run the way they want it to be run, regardless of people's opinions on it. Just a difference of opinion there. Well, mm-hmm. I think it's just that cognitive dissonance. Right. Like this idea that it's 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 my God is the right God. Right. There, there couldn't possibly be another correct. Like your God is the wrong God. Um, yeah, it's a God of love. It's a God of peace. Um, no other religions and, ever had that before. So they get they might get a point. Right. And, you know, and any violence that does happen is going to be justified. Righteous mm-hmm. violence. Mm-hmm. I, I think she really firmly believes, too, that the USA was founded as a Christian nation by Christians and the con- Constitution was mostly influenced by the Bible. You know, it's a narrative and of course, she's pushing, yeah. Yeah, right. Of course, we all know that none of that's true. And I think she could really benefit from reading Andrew Seidel's book, The Founding Myth. But I'm afraid that even if she was given a copy of it, she wouldn't even read it, you know. Um, however, if like hundreds of copies got sent to her office in the Idaho State Capitol, maybe she'd have to take notice of the book and maybe open it up. That's an interesting thought. Uh, the way they burn books in, in those areas of the, of the country, I don't think it would bother her too much. It, it's getting into the summer mo- summer months right now, but it'll get cold enough for those burning for them later. Mm, uh, campfires I, are fun. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I just... I, I really feel like they know what they're doing that uh and and she they got to understand by now that this violent rhetoric that they're putting out for everybody is having effects even Tucker Carlson on their side is is trying to back off the blame for the buffalo shooting because he's doing the white replacement crap in in his news say it, it it's it's all a bunch of horrible stuff that's coming from their side. And as soon as something bad happens, they do try to take the blame off them when, when it's something violent and it doesn't go with their narrative. But uh, as long as, as long as the country's following their narrative and like listening to the righteous uh, Christian anger or Christian idea of justice, they're going to keep doing this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I had, a, I, I guess, uh, sorry, Brett, Kelly, go yeah. ahead. Oh, I was just going to say Idaho is kind of a weird state, too, because a couple of decades ago, there was this movement by a far right political and religious organizations to get people to move to Idaho because it had a small population. And if they got enough people to move there, they could start to control the politics. And the northern half of the state is basically now ruled by these far right uh, evangelical Christians. Right. Um, These Christian nationalists who personally I think are the biggest threat to democracy in the country right now. But um, to me, this is just like really important to get people that how important it is for you to go out and vote, even in the off elections in the midterms in the off years, we got to go out and vote to keep these kind of people out of office. I think people are noticing that a little too late on a lot of these issues, but now it's time we got to be correct in the course. I absolutely agree with you on that, Kelly. Yeah, and something about the voting, actually, if you go to um, Lieutenant Governor uh, McGeechan's uh, Twitter page, you'll you'll notice that she's she's made some posts, um, and and I I'm in no way advocating for insurrection here, but I just I question her convictions because one of the posts that she's made um, says, "quote For two years, I've said the 2020 election was stolen, Mr. Little." Uh, Governor Brad Little refuses to acknowledge this, making him complicit in the theft. Mr. Little can't be trusted to keep Idaho's elections secure. Vote McGeechan May 17th. Election integrity is on the ballot. Uh, so I question here, 
if if she believes so strongly that the election was fraud, fraudulent and you know maybe subsequent elections are fraudulent why is she relying on that very institution to get herself elected if she's so adamant that the election was yeah. insecure why isn't she doing more to rail uh, against this institution why is she, she just she, encouraging people to vote um she was like, elected into the office she holds too right exactly <laughs> well it's only um, it's only real when they get elected only the right wing people and, get and elected that's, that's uh, more of the cognitive honestly. dissonance right I don't think it's talking to distance. Yeah. It, it's just lying in like trying to get like an excuse for any time they lose. It was because there was fraud. Anytime they win, everything's a okay. Just some opportunism. Yes. There is a, uh, a specific demographic that, um, that I think that they are um, targeting um, for this rhetoric. rhetoric. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it definitely has, uh, but I, I'm hoping that it's run its course. Uh, so um, we're we're seeing the finals of the the midterm elections now. It just happened uh, as of the recording of this uh, episode yesterday, and um, we um, are seeing that a lot of the people like um, the lieutenant governor, who was endorsed by our former president, um, are not getting. Um, the numbers of, uh, of votes, like, like Kelly said, um, uh, um, Janice definitely lost. Um, Madison Cawthorn lost. Uh, now, far as um, other places around the nation, as um, far as I've seen, it's been a kind of a split of the 70-some people that um, Trump had nominated it was uh, 28 in the mid 20s of those that actually won their uh, positions or um since this was a primary run before uh, is, is now at the seat to run in november um so i'm i'm trying to see this as a, a positive thing in that you know um when she's giving these interviews to people that will listen, um, that group of people is shrinking. Um, and uh, um, this uh, this guns and Bible thing is not something that is going to be able to be sustainable. Um, I think we have a lot more people in the U.S. that are seeing the toxicity and the, uh, the problem with Christian nationalism, that's for sure. I, I, go ahead. Go ahead, Josh. No, Josh, please go ahead. I, I was just going to say they're always going to have that strict uh, fan base of people that are going to be the Bibles and gun people, but it is definitely shrinking. But if you talk to those people, which uh, I, I've done in some groups because I'm I'm a nar uh, I'm built for punishment, I guess. I've gone on to Reddit and talked to those kinds of people that are the Bibles and guns kinds of people. And they see conspiracy theories everywhere. These people, they, they don't sound credible though. And they're the kind of, they're the base that they're appealing to now. And it, it definitely is shrinking, but I don't think we'll ever get rid of the Bibles and gun crowd, at least within our lifetime. I don't think so either, but I, but they they aren't a big enough crowd to take over our political system. Fortunately, the problem has been in the last few ones. Yeah, well, the problem has been in the last few years. They've been very vocal and they've drawn other other voters over into their group, right? And that's been the big problem. But I think a lot of those people are seeing these people that we have already elected: uh, Green, Bobert, Cawthorn, uh, Gates. They talk a great game, but when it comes down to doing something, none of the four of them have put a bill in. None of them have done any any lawmaking or legislature work. All they're doing is going out there and playing this this good game, calling this good game, and collecting money so they can get reelected. And now we're seeing, at least like with Bobert and Green, we're seeing that they've had problems with their campaign funding. So I, I think that when you stand up people like them and who have been the most vocal and most seen people from their movement and you're seeing that they're not getting anywhere, they're not actually doing something, it kind of hurts the whole movement. And that's why a lot of these people that were drawn in initially are being are dropping away now because they want something done. They want, you know, it's it, you talk a good game, but now you got to start walking it and these people aren't walking it.
I, I just worry with this kind of talk, we got to make sure that we're not getting complacent because that's what happened around the 2016 election. Is a, we, it seemed like a long shot that anybody with uh, his kind of uh, his kind of personality would ever get put into office, and people got complacent, and that's what happened. The problem is these people are really fired up. The people that take the Christianity to heart, the white nationalists, that, that they're they're actually going to the elections regardless of whether or not they're thinking there's fraud or they're going and voting for the most part well i see a lot of apathy on uh the uh, on the the left side and even some of the atheist groups that i go into they, they think that uh because of what happened with roe versus wade that they they are giving up on the government they're deciding this to throw in the towel because uh, it doesn't work for them you can't ever get into that because then you're just conceding it all to to the more extremist views All right, vote, vote. Yeah, pretty much. I, but, I would say that uh, that is going to be. Um, I think the incumbent um, president usually has a hard time in the midterm elections of the uh, the party of, and um, so it is definitely very important for us to um, uh, keep people like Lieutenant Governor. Uh, well, never. Well, I, sorry, um, I guess before we move on, Malti, I just, yeah. you, know, you guys are encouraging people to vote, and I, vote, sorry, and I think it's important to remember that uh, though McGeekin lost her opponent, the um, uh, the incumbent, yeah, 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 governor, is still no peach himself, right? No, um, no. He's anti-choice, he opposes gun, gun control, he's anti-LGBT, uh, he opposes cannabis legalization. Um, so his positions, you know, they, they really aren't better. They're maybe just quieter. Mm. Right. So, uh, yeah, when you, you're talking about this governor's race, um, you may have a quieter uh, Republican candidate, uh, but it's still important to. Uh, sorry, I guess. This being yeah. the first time, I, I can't make any endorsements on this show as, as far as yeah, I know. We, 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 we can vote, but you can't like endorse a certain politician. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, yes. Yeah, no so, calls. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say that you know people should be aware of what are the positions um, of the candidates they're voting for. And I, I just think that um, uh, the incumbent governor has some questionable uh, questionable positions himself. So just you know be aware of that when you're voting. Mm -hmm. Be informed and vote. 